Hello, F-Sharp. Welcome back. We are continuing our journey of introducing you to the basic ideas of F-Sharp. Today, what we're going to talk about is discriminated unions or unions in some other languages. There might be a few other names that I'm not familiar with. And one of the jokes that I make is that a discriminated union is what an enum wants to be when it grows up. So let's talk about what discriminate. Well, first of all, let's talk about what are discriminated unions? How do we define them? And then at the end, we'll discuss why do we care about discriminated unions? What are they useful for? So to illustrate this, what I want to do is I'm going to define, well, let me go back here. Well, yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to say, again, I'm going to start with my silly example of having a chicken. Chicken has a name, which is a string, and then a size, which is float. And then I'm also going to have a case of well, sorry, I'm going to have a type of turkey, which again, I know I'm using silly names, but it makes it easy. I don't have to spend time thinking about different types I'm going to use. Now, what happens if we want to write a function that we want to be able to pass a chicken or a turkey and to be able to deal with both of them? Well, in object-oriented programming, what you would likely do is create a type which is, you know, bird, and then chicken and turkey would inherit from bird, and then they would share attributes between them. F-sharp takes a slightly different tact to that. F-sharp has what, are, what is called an algebraic type system. And more than that, it has a Henley Milner type system. Now, I'm not going to go into the details of that because, frankly, A, I don't know them. <laughs> but uh, I know it's part of what powers the logic behind F Sharp's type inference. So let's talk about what an algebraic type system is. Now, we, uh, it's, it's, when we say algebraic type system, we're not talking about like algebra necessarily we're not talking about like addition subtraction not that type of algebra algebra is actually a much more broad term in mathematics and i'm not going to bore you with that but there's kind of two different classes of types that you can think about there are and types and there are or types let me illustrate that so a chicken is what we would consider an and type what do i mean by that so a chicken is a type which has a name and it has a size. A turkey is a type that has a name and it has a size. These types have multiple fields and they are anding each other. It, it, has, it has a string field and it has a size field. So lots of types that you've dealt with are and types. They have, a, they have a field and another field and another field and another field. So get that idea of anding. Like we, we're, we're creating a type by anding a bunch of other types together to form a new type. In this case, chicken has anded a string and a float to create the chicken type. Turkey has also anded a string and a float to create the turkey type. Okay. Well, in logic, there is and, and there are ors. What is an or? An or type. So that's where a discriminated union comes in. So let's say if I wanted to define a type bird. Now we are not going to use the object orientation idea of inheritance. We are going to use this other idea, which is the discriminated union. So now what we're doing is say like, hey, a bird is a chicken of type chicken or it's a turkey of type turkey. Okay, so what is going on here? I'm defining a new type, which is a bird. And then I'm using this bar. Now, bar is also the logical or uh, in a lot of languages. So if you said like, hey, you know, uh, you would have some logic case where like X, you know, uh, yeah, X and Y. Say like, hey, both of these conditions have to be true. Or you can write something like X or Y. So this, this bar symbol is often the or symbol. Well, in F sharp, you have to use uh, two to do oring, and you have to use two ands to have uh, and logic. So now 
what we want to do is we want to say, okay, we have this or a bird is a ch is the case of chicken or it is a case of turkey. So this is what an or type is. Instead of having a bunch of fields that we are anding together, we are oring cases. So some things I want to point out here. This here is the case name. It could be cluck, right? It could be anything I want. Um, I could say monkey here. I could say like blah, blah here. It, whatever, the only thing that it is, it is just the name of the case. So, so here it is just the name of the case. Now, often what you will see is that the name of the case matches the type name on the right, but it does not necessarily have to be that way. And that's something that could be pretty, conf that was kind of confusing for me at the beginning. Like, is this, is there's like some special incantation for these names matching? No, there's not, not at all. Uh, in fact, you can have things like, um, like I said, you could have pens of int. Like these two things are only related in that this is the name here on the left. And this is the type that that case holds. So let's go ahead and delete that. So now instead of creating this idea of inheritance, right? Define an object and then I inherit from that object. Instead, what we do is we say like, no, we create our types. And then we kind of compose them together with an or type, which in this case is a bird to define um, kind of these composites where like, hey, it's these groupings of types. So now what happens is like, okay, well, Matthew, you've, you've defined this new type bird. How do I, how do I even work with that? What does that even mean? Okay, great. Let's create an instance of bird. So what you could do is first, I'm going to create a chicken and again, uh, name of clucky because our chickens are always named clucky and the size equal to 10. And right now it's defaulting to Turkey. So I'm going to put a type in here saying like, no, 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 no. I want you to interpret this as a chicken. So by putting this type hint in here, we're telling you, no, no, no. When you see this record, uh, definition here, make it that type. So now we've created an instance of chicken. C1 is a chicken, but I want a, well, put that back. I want a bird. What? I, I want a bird. So how do I make one of these? It's a great question. So what we're going to do is we're going to say bird dot chicken and then give it C1. So here what we're doing and saying, hey, I have the type bird and I want to create a case of that type. In this case, I'm giving it the type chicken and then I have to give it the value I want it to put in that case. Now, I could also create a turkey, right? So, hey, create a turkey and let's say turkey in this case, just to make it super clear what I'm doing. And this is gonna be a gobble and it's size turkeys are bigger than chickens. So it's going to be size 20. And now I want to create a bird, but that is of the case Turkey. So let me do that. So I say bird dot Turkey and I'm going to give it T one. Oh, that's in my thing. Going here. There we go. So now I have, I created a chicken and then I wrap this in this chicken case for the bird type. So now it is a bird. And then I created a turkey and I wrapped that turkey in the turkey case of the bird type. If this is a little confusing, that is completely okay. I found this kind of difficult to wrap my head around. Discriminated unions, unions, they're, they're strange if you've never been exposed to them. But once you've worked with them a little bit, it's kind of like, oh man, I don't know how I got through life without these before. But if you if you're struggling a little bit, it's totally okay. I I struggle with them for a while, so this is kind of one of those videos that you're likely going to need to like watch, and then go back and rewatch, and maybe read the documentation, and then like run this code yourself. So 
I put links to the code and all my examples uh, down below so that you can go and run this yourself. So you can go grab this script, run it yourself, play around with it and see what's happening. So I'm actually going to run this code that we've written to date so that you can actually, so that you can like actually believe me that I actually know what I'm talking about here. So I'm creating my types and then I'm going to create my instance of chicken. And so like, Hey, C1 is a chicken. Its name is clucky. It size is 10. And then I'm going to create bird B1, which is a bird. And you can see here, it's saying like, Hey, B1, it's a bird and it is holding a chicken. And these are the values of it. Now I'm going to create the turkey, which is T1. Its name is gobble. Its size is 20. And then I'm going to create the bird instance of it. So I've created this discriminated union with a turkey case. That turkey case is holding an instance of the turkey type. Okay. Now let's talk about how we would actually use these. It's like, okay, Matthew, you've shown me how to create these things, but how do I actually use them? How do I write a function to actually work with these discriminated unions? That is a great question. So I'm going to go ahead and I just collapse that. That's the absolute opposite of what I want to do. <laughs> So I'm going to create this function. So I'm going to say like, Hey, my bird function, and it's going to take a bird. And then I want it to do something. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say like, Hey, I want, I want you to take the bird. Then I want you to print the case. And I want you to print the name of the bird is what it's going to do. So how do we get to values inside of discriminated unions? Fantastic questions. We use match with statements. Let me walk you through that. So I'm going to say match B with, and now you should start to notice some symmetry. Notice that when we defined bird, we were using these bars and this bar is the or symbol in logic. And we want to say, Hey, we want to, basically undo that wrapping operation. We want to go in the other direction. Well, fortunately, there's this nice symmetry where we say like, hey, bar chicken of C. And I, I'm just going to complete this and then I'm going to walk you through it. And so I'm going to say print function and I'm going to use an interpolated string. Hey, it's chicken and its name is C dot. Uh, Z dot name. And then I'm also going to have turkey T print function uh, turkey. And then I'm going to give the name here. So T dot name. Okay. Let's talk about what we're doing here. So we say like, Hey, we want to match this value. And what match is doing is it's saying like, Hey, I'm going to match against these different cases. And whichever case matches first, that's the logic I'm going to go with. And what we're doing here is saying like, Hey, I know this is a bird and I know chicken is a case of bird and there's a value inside of it. In this case, that value is a chicken. And so C it, what it's doing is it's basically unwrapping that bird type and giving me the value that is inside that case. That is what this C is. And so now I can work with the chicken itself. At the same time, I also have this match statement against the turkey saying like, hey, in the case that bird is a turkey, here is the value for T and I can work with that. Now, what's cool is I'm going to comment this back out and you're going to see I get this yellow squiggle here. And what's happening is F sharp is saying, hey, this is an incomplete pattern match on this expression. For example, the value of turkey may indicate, indicate a case that is not covered. So this is one of the reasons people get really excited about discriminated unions is because a compiler can tell you like, Hey, you're not covering all the possible cases for this type. And this is where F sharp gets its reputation for being a great language for doing domain driven design or domain modeling. And because it can enforce it force you to deal with all the different possible cases. So I'm going to go ahead and uncomment that. So now we have this function. I ran it in the REPL, so now it's available to me. Um, I don't know why you're angry. Whatever. 
So I am now going to call this. I want to call my bird function with B1. Now remember, B1 is a bird type. It is a discriminated union. The case is chicken, and inside of it is a value of type chicken. And so hopefully we'll get what we expect. Cool. So what happened? It printed out chicken lucky. And when we look at the logic of this function, it says like, yep, yeah, when it has when it has a case of chicken, it's going to do this print function, which in this case is chicken uh, colon then the name. I should put the colon here for symmetry. Now let's run it with B2. So this in this case, it is the turkey that is inside of there. And it says, yep, we are printing out turkey and gobble. So that is a really, really quick introduction to what discriminated unions are in F sharp. There is a ton more to unpack here that I will do in future videos. But for now, I just wanted this to be a, a quick intro to the idea so you can kind of start seeing it and getting your mind around it. There's one last thing I wanted to mention to you. Now, you notice that I put bird here at the beginning was creating a case. <sighs> Technically, you don't need this because when you create these DUs, it automatically exposes the cases. <sighs> I have opinions here. I, I, it's, it's okay that that is the default behavior in F sharp. I strongly encourage you to add this attribute to your discriminated unions. And what this is doing, this attribute is the required qualified access attribute. And what this does is says like, hey, it's not just going to make those cases available to your code. You are going to be forced to begin these with the name of the type and then do a dot and then the case name. I strongly encourage you to adopt this in your code. It may not seem like a big deal starting out, but the more code you write and the larger your domain gets, the more likely there are going to be cases where you have multiple discriminated unions and the, those different discriminated unions all have the same case in them. It's, it, it's not here this animal example, but Trust me, this happens very quickly the larger your code bases get. So as a best practice, if you're creating a discriminated union like this one, for your own sake, add this attribute to the top of it saying require qualified access and it will force you to qualify. I'm talking about this type and then this case. Trust me. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to frown on you if you don't do it. There's lots of other code bases that don't do that, but I have found that this can be a major time saver as the complexity of your domain grows. So that's the last bit I have for you for now. In the future, we'll go into much greater detail on all the things that you can do with discriminated unions. But for now, there's your quick intro. If you need, if you have any questions, if you want additional clarifications, things you want me to dive into more, please leave a comment down below. That's how I hear from you and know what content you're interested in. I'm, I'm doing this for you. I love the F-Chart community and I'm trying to help out. So thank you for very much for spending some time with me. I hope you have a wonderful day.